Hello everyone, welcome back, or should I say, I'm back. Uh, it's been a while since my last upload, but I've been experimenting with the new version of 3D Coat, or should I say it's the beta of uh, 3D Coat, and there are some really cool features, and I want to show you one feature uh, today called the Constructor, and it essentially allows you to create shapes through uh, basic primitives and you can build it almost like Minecraft where you would place these primitives for example a cube and you could just replicate them together and build it that way so it's a lot more like modeling as you would in a video game than it is um, within a, a modeling package so I want to show you that today I'm gonna to create something similar to this I've created this gimbal using this exact technique so I'm gonna show you how you can create something similar um, with that constructor technique and also some other things like the Vox High tool and the cutoff tool, the pose tool to achieve uh, very similar results. So without further ado, let's continue. So let's get into 3D Coat. I've just got my reference at the top left hand corner here. I'm using Pure Ref. If you're interested, you can download Pure Ref online and uh, maybe just drop them some money as well, donate some money to them. And uh, yeah, fantastic piece of software just to upload your references to. It'll always be on top of your menus, on top of your software, uh, so you can easily view it within your software. So let's start. So this is, again, the beta version of 3D Coat. Um, you can download it off their website and experiment with it. And also uh, drop them some feedback if you've got any bugs or any, any kind of comments. So let's go into voxel sculpting and I'm going to start with the uh, grid here and let's scroll all the way down. So when you first start 3D Coat, you're going to have your tools on the left hand side. We've got our voxel tools, our clay draw tools, our just tools, pose, and in this case we're using objects. And we're looking at this one right here, constructor. So when you select constructor, um, I believe I've changed some of these numbers here. They're usually set to an X, Y, Z or Z as uh, 20 by 20 by 20. I've just changed these to 40 just to make them slightly bigger. Uh, I'll show you both versions. That's fine. So let's start with our cube. So let's just select our first cube here. And we can see on the grid it starts to snap our cube along the grid. So we've got this ghosted cube here. If you just hold left click and drag, then we can start to sculpt with this cube. And if you make any kind of mistake, maybe you've added more than you didn't want, you can just hold control and left click and then it will remove those blocks. So you can kind of see what I mean by Minecraft where we can just very quickly place these blocks within the scene and we can start to build our model this way. Very handy, quick tool to, to utilize uh, within a 3D modeling package. So. Let's say, for example, we wanted to bevel this corner. I can just hold control and just remove each corner, like so. And let's select this bevel corner here. Now you'll notice that it will start to snap along this corner because it wants to know where it's going to bevel. So if I beveled here, then I could get that kind of effect. Let's do the same on this side. There we go. If I didn't like that, again, I can hold control and left click just to remove it. And I can just go into the corner here if I want to bevel around that corner. So let's do the same here. And let's try a different type of bevel on this side, maybe a, a cutoff on the side. So let's do something similar. I've waited for it to snap in the corner, hold left click, and then there we go. So it's a very quick tool to utilize. Again, if you wanted to go back into this, hold control and left click, then we can start to remove areas. And because we can change the block size of the X, Y, and Z axes, let's just keep it uniform and change everything to 20 by 20 by 20. And now when I start to sculpt, let's say with the cube, then I can add a little lip here. Let's just go below it. Let's go down the bottom here. Then it can have this effect. So to me, this is amazing. This just feels really fun. And that's partly why I use 3D Coat almost exclusively, because it's just fun. It's just fun to model in 3D Coat. And I don't really get that experience anywhere else. I think ZBrush is amazing. It has some amazing tools, but I just don't feel like I have that much fun um, within ZBrush. 
it's just personal preference. Obviously, everyone's got their own preference, but yeah, I just love 3D Coat if you haven't already figured that one out. So let's do something similar in here. Let's maybe see if we can add a little corner like so. And you can just keep going, experiment. So let's say, for example, you didn't really know what design you wanted to come up with. You just wanted to have a, a, a free flow of, of modeling where, um, for example, when I'm drawing, sometimes I just don't know what I'm going to design. I've got an idea in mind, but I haven't got a solid idea. So I'll just very quickly do some loose sketches. And you can come up with some really cool designs that way uh, just by free thinking and just placing some random objects within the scene and see what it looks like. And you could do the same thing in 3D. So you can utilize this tool just to create some random shapes and see what you can come up with, especially hard surface design. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. Let's go to File and New. Let's just move this over so we can see. So File, New, don't save. And let's go back into Voxel Sculpting again. And let's select the grid, right? Let's move this one over here. And let's try to model this. Right, so let's go back into Constructor. I'm going to change this over to 40 by 40 by 40. Let's make sure that one is the same, just to make it a little bit bigger on the grid. And let's select this cube. Now we can see here, if I just zoom this one in, we've got this really nice circular bevel here that loops all the way around, and it's the exact same on the other side. We've also got a cut through here, so we've got multiple objects, one, two, and three, but we're gonna make the whole thing solid and then use these splitting tools afterwards. So let's just zoom out there and push that one back into the corner and let's start with this design. So let's first zoom in, hold left click and drag. And at this stage, you might not know what size you wanna make it, so just make it fairly small and then you can always make it a bit bigger afterwards. You could also go into the transform tool and just make this bigger if you need to. And let's go back into constructor. Now the only problem with the beta is it is quite glitchy, or at least it is on my machine. So if you hold W here, or just press W, um, we can actually see the voxels within the scene. Um, but I found that sometimes when you press W, it just doesn't work. Um, so yeah, it can be a little bit glitchy. You might have totally different glitches. If so, I'm really sorry, but it's the beta, and hopefully they iron some of these glitches out. Right, so let's have a look at this bevel here. Now if I remove this one and remove this one from the edge and then use this bevel. If that's the effect you want, that's great, but ideally I want this to be beveled all the way around. I want this to be totally circular. So how can I do that? Because if I have a bevel on this side and then remove this one so that I can have it in the side, it doesn't work unless it's selected to place edges. So if this is on smart placement, which it is by default, it won't work. Okay, it's not actually showing up with anything. But if I select place edges, then I can, right? Which then means that this object is too large, so I need to scale this one down. So let's cut this one off, and then add these two bevels, right? So there's our shape. If you want to make that a bit bigger, then we can go back into transform and we can scale that up. But for now, because we're keeping everything consistent at 40 by 40 by 40, I'm gonna keep it the same and then I'll just scale it up later, okay? So this is fairly low poly. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom to resample here. It's currently set to 101,000. So I'm just gonna bump this up. Um, let's just make sure it's not at a million. 700,000, that should do it. You can always go up even higher if you want to. I'm also going to switch this over to a orthographic view instead of perspective. So it's a new feature here where it starts to hide the option. If you go up to the top right here, we can see all of our options. If you select that little cube next to this little house, then we can change this to orthographic. Now that's going to remove the perspective from the scene. So now when I go to a side view, and whilst I'm holding Alt and left click 
and moving the mouse, I can hold shift at the same time and then it will snap to the grid. Okay. In the same way I could go up to the top, hold shift and it'll snap to the grid. Okay. If I go back into perspective, we can actually see the perspective within the 3D model. So let's just go into orthographic, right? So before we split this off, let's just create this shape that's directly on top here. So what does this look like? It's basically the same model again, and I'm going to model it away from this one and just create a new layer. So it's not on the same layer as this one. So let's go down here in the sculpt tree and this first little icon here, it's a square with a plus icon. That's our new layer. And now we have our new layer here. You can always name them. I'm extremely lazy. I should definitely label these, but it's a small model. Um, if you want to label these, you just double click and then um, I'll call this middle. There we go. Not so lazy. Right, so let's do the same thing here. So it's around about this size again. And I know it's two, but it's also going to cut off halfway, whereas the rest is going to be this bevel. Again, that's selected as place edges. And I can just bevel this edge here and here. Brilliant. So we've got the same shape. Now, this shape is a little bit more complicated. And I need to remember <laughs> what I did to create that shape. Now, I'm pretty sure I used this one. So I believe this one goes up here. So we've got this sharp incline. And let's put them two together. And then I've created a box which can go from here to here and then also the box on top. Now to get that cut off through the side there, uh, ideally I need to use the cut off tool. So I'm just going to hide the cube that's behind it and I'm going to go up to cut off. And if you press E on the keyboard, making sure that the ignore back faces is unticked, I can select the vertex lasso and let's just select from this side up to here. Left click all the way around and then double click. And now that's cut through there. And then let's add that bevel back on top. So let's go back to constructor and then add these two here and here. Okay, so that's that shape. Right, so let's add that one back on and let's just go back into our transform tool and they've changed some of these tools um, if you press the r key then you can scale this and if you press e then we can go back into our move tool here so that has changed from the original 3d code now i'm also going to go back down to the bottom here and resample this just make this a little bit higher again and I've also noticed there's a little cube here that I might just need to cut that off. So let's go back to adjust, cut off, select the rectangular tool this time by pressing E and then rectangle, and then just cut through there. There we go. Let's go back to that transform tool and then let's move this down. So now we've got two very distinct objects. So I'm gonna hide this one and let's just name this one uh, lower and let's split these off so how are these split off let's go into our objects and split and let's press e again and then select this rectangular tool so i'm going to split the object here and now we can see that there's another object that's being formed into the school uh, the sculpt tree directly underneath lower I'm just going to kick this one out because it's kind of put it within a hierarchy. I'm just going to move this one up and out. Okay, so now we've got two separate objects. And if you select the little sphere next to it, we can actually see through this object as well. And we can also see through this one if we turn this one off. And I just want to see where this seam is. So I'm going to go up to cut off. And I'm going to select that rectangular tool again. Because ideally, I want some sort of gap. So I'm just going to create a very small gap here, like so. We can just start to see that gap. And you'll start to see the gap even more if you use something like the smooth function. So that's just going to smooth the object out. You can also smooth the other objects as well. And you can just start to see that gap form. 
if you want to continue to cut off then you could so here I can just add a very small cut smooth it and then there is our scene so let's do the same thing again let's go back up to objects and split and this time I'm going to use that rectangular tool and split this one and if you find that you start to split any other objects then just turn them off go into the the uh, eye here and turn it off or if you select the sphere next to the eye that's going to turn the ghosting on and off and that will no longer be affected okay so again this is uh, snapped within the hierarchy so let's just bring this up and out and now we can start to see where that's been split again I could just go into smooth all if you don't want this die box to pop up every single time and you're happy with this default value of one you can say skip this dialog next time and then just go ahead and click OK. So this way you can just keep pressing smooth and you're going to get those results. Um, so let's see where our bottom one is. There we go. Let's select smooth all on this. And now we can see that really nice seam. So fantastic for hard surface designs. Right, let's turn this one back on and we might need to do a a smooth on this one as well let's turn this one on there we go just make that a little bit neater and let's see what I did here this was a totally different cut here and what I can remember what did I do here I think I did it slightly differently I am pretty sure um, I continue to use this split so let's have a look so let's split this off here and if you hold shift then it, you can create these snapped hard edges or hard lines sorry and then let's move that down here and all the way through and then split all of this off again let's pull this one out like so if I can I'm and there we go <laughs> I was snapping them all together and let's do the same thing. Let's smooth this a little bit just so we can start to see that edge. That looks quite good. And let's go back into that middle and also smooth that one out. Okay, so we can see both of them really nicely now. So that's looking good. Let's also split this section off here so we can add a different material. So let's make sure I'm on the right layer. That's looking good. And let's go back into that split. E to bring up the tools, rectangular tool, and then let's split this one off. And you can always go into the uh, materials here and just change the materials. And let's smooth that one. Now, if you don't want to have that smoothed edge, then ideally you need to go back into that cutoff tool and start to cut off part of that object. So you'll notice that this object is actually embedded within this one. We can just see this here. So you might need to just go back into that object and then just use the cutoff tool and just very lightly cut through it. Um, I'm getting mixed up with my layers now. Where are we? Of course, it's this one. Yeah. So you might just need to cut through that a little bit if you don't want that beveled edge. Okay. So there's that. Let's have a look at these two here. So we've got this object and this one. Let's just move this a little bit higher. Again, ideally, you should probably name these. But I'm not doing that for now. So let's hold the control and then hold these ones so that they're both selected. So these two objects. And let's go up to Vox. Now, has it changed within this layout? Let's have a look. Vox, Vox, Vox. There we go. It's still within Adjust. And there we go. Vox Hide. So let's press E rectangular tool and then let's try and cut through both of these there we go so we cut straight through both of those objects but I want to 
bring part of that object back so I could just use that as uh, part of my model or part of a, a button that's on this device. So let's go up here to geometry and then let's select the objectify hidden button. So now I've got an object uh, or at least of just this one. And can I do the same thing for this one? Let's have a look. Objectify hidden. There we go. So now we've got two buttons. Um, so it, it's going to objectify hidden based on one layer, not multiple. But we can bring both of these together. So we've got this layer and we have this one. So let's just move this one down. So we've got this one and this one. And let's actually label this just to make it a little bit easier. I give in. There we go. Now let's join these two together. So I can hold shift, drag up to the layer above and then let go. So now they're one layer and then I can just change the texture here. So now we've got a nice button embedded within our model. Right, so we've done the bottom section. We've split um, all these multiple objects uh, off into different components. We've got this middle section here. This is also going to change into a metal material, which we can do when we start to texture. And we've used the Vox High tool. Excellent. Now there's also a slight um, bevel here as well. And this is optional, but you could go back into this layer and you could use something like the Pose tool. So if you press E on the keyboard, I'm going to select the ignore back faces just to make sure that's unticked. And then I'm going to select the vertex lasso. So I'm just going to select part of this edge. Again, holding shift if I want those straight lines. And then let's select this. So what I can do is I can just bring this out slightly. And then I could just use that scale within the center and just scale this in. Okay, press enter and then you've got this kind of shape. So you can utilize that pose tool if you need to push and pull any element within your design. So let's say for example I wanted to uh, push part of this design out here. Then I can just make that selection, raise it, press enter and now we've got this design. You'll notice that these edges are actually quite sharp and that's also based on the border width. So this is set to 12. If I set this to something like 30 and then did the same, there's a bit more of a softer edge. Okay, so it's going to pull up with a bit more of a bevel. I believe by default it is set to 12 or it might be set uh, slightly lower, but I keep it at 12 and you get some nice shapes that way. Okay, brilliant. Also, uh, just whilst I'm here, when you use the pose tool and you select, let's say something like, well, any of these tools really, but let's select circle, for example. If I hold left click and drag, I can also hold the space bar and it can actually move this, um, this circle around. So I haven't actually made my selection yet. So just in case you haven't centered it or it's not in the right place, you can hold that space bar as soon as you're happy with it. You can then let go. So let go of spacebar, let go of left click, and now you've made your selection. And now you can start to push and pull these elements. Okay, I quite like that. I might actually keep that, but I might just bring it in instead. Yeah, something like that, why not? Okay, so we will uh, get on to making this top section here. I'm gonna create a new layer, and I might just skip this one here. Um, it's just using the exact same technique. I'm just going to create this section. Uh, I believe all, oh, actually, I will continue with it because all I did was duplicate this object and then just moved in, squished it in. So yeah, we'll continue with that. Right, so we've got our new layer within the sculpt tree. And let's go back up to, where are we, constructor. And let's select our cube. And let's make this one a little bit thinner. So let's select 20 by 20 by 20. Okay. And let's make this maybe three cubes across or four cubes. 
and then bring this one out. And I'm then going to deselect these sides, so hold control, left click, and then create that bevel, like so. And then I'll just do the same thing here and here. Select that bevel. Again, make sure if it's not working, it's set to place edges right on this edge. I'm going to scroll all the way down, resample, and then bump this up. Okay, there we go. Nice and high poly. So for the edge, I need to go onto that bevel and then bring this one down. In fact, let me just undo that high res and then let's do that afterwards. So let's do this here. Like so, make sure that snaps, and then I'll res this one up. Oh, okay, I think it was still slightly high poly. So let's do that again. Now it's glitching, so let's just redo all of that. Yeah, look, there we go. It's, look at that. Fantastic glitch. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to stick with this for now, but ideally you should have it low poly. Um, and then bump it up once you're happy with it. But for now, yeah, because it's a little bit glitchy, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. So let's stick with that. Uh, I'm just going to turn absolutely everything off here just so I can only see this design. And I might just go into the cutoff. And because I made that little mistake, I'm just going to cut that off from the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to go down and continue to smooth this. Okay, that looks a little bit better. And let's turn all of these back on. And let's move this one up. So let's go back up to our transform. And let's move this up here. Let's put this in place. Like so. And we could also press the R key and scale this out. And let's just make this a little bit thinner. I'm going to go back into that cutoff tool actually and just make a little adjustment. So I'm going to select that rectangular tool. Again, if you're unsure whether you've placed it in the right place, you can always just press spacebar. And then let's move that in place. That looks pretty good to me. Let go. And now I've made that cut. If you want a bit more of a bevel here, then you could use something like a circular tool first. So let's say we go into the circular tool and let's add a circle here. Let's try and get the same circumference from here to here. Create nice little Mickey ears <laughs> and then just cut all the way through. Uh, I might just need to move this over a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. So you can hold spacebar to move it and then let go of spacebar and continue to make those little adjustments. So here I'm just trying to make sure it cuts all the way through. You can see that was just a little bit off. Okay, there's a little bit off here. Uh, that pretty much did the exact same thing. So <laughs> we don't need to do that, right? But if you wanted to have that little bevel, then you could do that there. But you have to get that circle right in the right place. So it's a little bit more difficult. So we're not going to do that. We're literally just going to cut all the way through. Like so. Right, I digress there. So let's get back into our modeling. So that's looking okay there. All I did uh, in this case to make this top section was just duplicate this. So the second button here is duplicate. I can duplicate this and then I pressed E to rotate. And if you hold control whilst left clicking, then that will snap. And then I just moved this in place and just scaled this down by pressing R. Again, these are different keyboard shortcuts to uh, 3D coats. The beta is slightly different, like so. And then I just use the cutoff tool 
and then just cut through here. Okay. So that's how I got that shape. Now the center here, I actually used a vox hide. So let's go into this object and let's select our vox hide. And let's select the circular tool. I don't want to ignore back faces unticked. So let's create this circular shape here. And then let's let go around about there. Okay, good. In this case, I actually noticed that I didn't have a totally circular shape here. So all I did is I uh, increased the amount of um, of the constructor that I used. So in this case, I think this was two up, um, whereas it's three up if you want that kind of effect. So just experiment with it and see what results you get. So that has cut all the way through, which is great. I'm now going to use the geometry and objectify hidden. And now I've got my objects right here and here. This one, I also need to go into Objectify, so Geometry, Objectify Hidden, and now I've got both of them. And it's also added a really nice bevel there, which is awesome. So let's go back into Resample. I'm just going to bump all of this up. If it's taxing on your computer, then you don't need to uh, add this to such a high number. You could keep it at about 400,000 maybe, 500,000, uh, but anything above that is great. This is high poly, this is just as a concept. Um, we can retopologize this later. Right, so let's just very quickly change all of these material colors. So let's select uh, this one here. That looks okay. And uh, I also use the cutoff tool for this, uh, or the vox hide tool for this little indent here. So let's just go back into vox hide and let's do the same thing again. Do the same thing again. Right, put it there. That is done. Let's go to geometry, objectify hidden. And there we go, look at that. We've got a little, um, it's remembering what was there before so what you might need to do is first go to geometry and then go to uh, delete hidden okay so it's not going to remember it then you can use your vox hide and now it's starting afresh so geometry objectify hidden and now it is a new object so i'm just going to go into polymer and maybe just change this to something else Right, so let's very quickly go on to the texturing. I'm going to very quickly retopologize this. Um, we can see that this is currently set to 5 million uh, visible triangles. You certainly don't want that. So let's move that into um, the, um, the retopo room. And it's slightly different here. You usually have these little tabs, but this case it's like a, a little drop down menu. And you can go from Sculpt to Render. Um, there's some other tools that I haven't uh, experimented with yet, but we're going to go into Retopo. For now, I'm very quickly going to do an automatic Retopo via decimation. So I'm just selecting the last layer. I'm holding Shift. I'm selecting the top layer. Then right click, and we're going to go to Retopo via decimation. So it's going to decimate the model. I'm going to try and get this as low as possible. So let's set this to something like 98. So it's going from 5 million to 106,000. Uh, let's be cheeky and let's see what this looks like at 99. It's a hard surface shape, so it shouldn't be too difficult. If it's a little bit more organic, then it might need to be uh, a little bit uh, higher than that. But 53,000, let's try that. Let's click OK. If you were retopologizing this yourself, it's going to be much, much, much lower. Uh, but let's just do this automatically. Okay, let's click OK there. And there we go. We have decimated our model. We could have even have gone just a little bit uh, higher than that. Maybe 99.4, 99.5. And just really bring that down. But you can see now it's decimated and it is much lower. We can now bake this, so let's just go on to bake and bake with normal map and click OK. And let's 
bake it as is at 2k. So I'll upload another video uh, with retopology. Uh, for now, I'm just very quickly breezing through it just so I can retopologize and then start to paint. Okay, so now within the poly groups, or oh, sorry, the poly groups need to be kept on uh, the sculpt tree. I can just turn all of these off. So that's going to turn off the high poly model. I can then go up here from retopo to paint. And then here is my uh, model. This is my lower poly model. So let's just create a new layer here and let's select a white material. Now this might not be there by default. Uh, all I did was uh, press plus and then I just pressed OK, save, because it's just a, a blank uh, white plastic material. So uh, that's how I created this one. Here on the side, um, again, this is a little bit glitchy. There should be some options here. Let me just see if I can bring them back up. Okay, so again, a little bit glitchy. I'm unsure whether I'm supposed to press something, but if you go back into the sculpt room and then back into paint, they all appear on the side. If they're not there, then again, I'm unsure whether that's a glitch or whether I'm supposed to press something on the keyboard. Uh, I'm new to this beta, so um, to me, it looks like some sort of a glitch, but let's continue. So let's go down to the fill. And I'm going to press E on the keyboard and select this uh, first brush here. I'm also going to make sure ignore back faces is unticked. And I'm just going to paint all of these objects here. Okay, and experiment. I'm just painting it this way. You can definitely change this and, you know, add your own spin to it. So let's have a look. It's a little bit glitchy here. Uh, probably could have bumped it up a little bit higher. Um, or just painted it without even retopologizing it. If it's just a concept and you're just going to do a render of it, then you don't need to. But if this is going to go into a game engine, then ideally you're going to want to retopologize it and paint it properly. So for now, and retopologize properly. For now, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Uh, but just keep that in mind. It is a little bit glitchy. So let's go into metals and I'm just going to name this one white and let's create a new layer and let's create a metal surface. I'm going to click OK to all of this by default. It does a pretty good job. It's now baking that curvature map. OK, OK, OK. It's going to bake the lights. And that's a little bit much. If we go onto this smart material preview here, we can just move this down and we can see what effect that has on our model. So that's that's a bit much. Let's have a look at this one. And again, ideally, this is why you retopologize this by hand because uh, the map has just been baked automatically. So let's just keep that like that, and we can always just paint into this afterwards. So let's paint this one. That's pretty cool. And then I'll just paint these the same. Again, take your time, experiment, just have fun with it. That looks pretty cool. Now let's try and add some little scratches and little dirt marks. So I'm going to create a new layer again and let's go into our leaks maybe or let's try dirt and see what dirt looks like. Okay, I think by default that looks pretty good. So let's try that one. The opacity is currently set to 100. If it looks like it's too dark, you can always lower that opacity. Uh, let's try some of these other ones. Whoa, so as an example, because that one is really harsh, uh, that one's pretty cool. But because it's really harsh, we can go back into that opacity 
and let's just change that to something like 10 and see what that looks like. Okay, not bad. So let's try 20 maybe. So back up here, 20. That looks okay. If you want this effect, of course. There we go. But what you can also do is, let's just go back to 100%. And this one was really harsh. Okay, so this one was really dirty. You could just paint on individual uh, pieces yourself. So let's just do this on, let's just name this Dirt 2. Oh, Dirt 1, sorry. And then we'll create a Dirt 2. And let's go on to the uh, airbrush and press E and then select our first brush. And then let's just very lightly paint onto this. So I'm just going to increase the brush size. And we can see we can just start to paint on those little worn edges on the side. Let's maybe do the same here and here. Maybe experiment with some different brushes. Again, that's set to 100, so maybe half this and go for 50, see what that looks like. So what you can also do is you can create a new layer and you can start to add some scratches, so actual indents within the model, um, or at least within the normal map, which makes it look like it's uh, indented. So we can create a new layer, and I'll just name this one uh, Scratch. And I've gone back into my default white uh, texture. I've got this set to Pen, and we've got some default scratches here that I'm going to see if I can utilize. And if I just press left click, then we can see that it, it um, sticks out away from the model. But if I hold control, then it looks like it's embedded within the model. So that's a little bit harsh. Let's set this to something like 30% depth. And then let's have a look at that. Maybe 10%. And just think, for example, if I drop this, at what point would it get scratched? So it could be here, maybe just a little bit down the bottom here. And then all the way down here, like so. And then maybe a little bit on the top here. Yeah, just experiment with it. Think about the story of whatever you're modeling. You might not be modeling this. You might not be following this um, exact tutorial, this model. Uh, but yeah, that's the technique. Let's do a little bit here as well. So now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and render this. Um, we're at 43 minutes. Whoa, whoa, these tutorials are quite long. I'm sorry about that. But uh, there's no other way. I don't really like to do these kind of sped up videos. It's better to just see it. I make mistakes. You can see my mistakes, which is great because if you make a mistake, then you can see how I made it and how I fixed it. Um, so I'm not afraid of looking like a fool for making these mistakes so you shouldn't either right let's go into the render section there we go we've got some nice lighting already embedded within the render and it's already looking quite nice there uh, we can go back into the perspective view and it just depends how you want to render it i think i might just render this at uh, orthographic just so we can see a little bit more of this model and then you could just render multiple views uh, so if you were doing uh, let's just go back into this one. If you wanted to do a front and a back view, then you could just render two out. And I've put this into Photoshop and I've just added my own little background there, uh, which I can show you actually. Let's complete this entire tutorial back into Photoshop. So let's render this one out. So that looks pretty good at that angle. I'm just going to turn the grid off here next to the cube where you've got the perspective in orthographic. We've got a grid. We can just turn that off. Let's just see maybe just a little bit of the top section here. That looks pretty good. 
If you want to change any of the lighting scenarios, then you can do that. You can change that uh, here within the environment map, and you can change some of the lighting scenarios. Uh, I believe by default it's set to the car park. Uh, it looks like it is, yeah. And you can also move your lighting this way, uh, blur the background, increase the uh, visibility of the background. Just experiment with these and see what results you get. But for now, I'm just going to render this out as a blank background. So let's have a look. We've got 3D code hardware. We need to expose this out. So I'm going to select render. And then that's going to ask me, hey, where do you want to save this? So I'm going to put this on the desktop. And I'm going to just label this render one. And then that will render that one. And then I'm going to render this side as well. Okay. And then render again. It's going to say, what do you want to call this? So I'm going to render this one. As render two excellent and then I'm going to pause this and go straight into Photoshop I'm going to show you how we can just piece this together into a nice little presentation okay I'll see you over to there okay so now I have my two renders I need to put these into a individual layer so I'm just going to drag this down and then drag this background layer onto the render one. Now I can just close this down. So now I've got my background layer and my layer one. I'm just gonna double click on this background just to uh, unlock that from the background. So now it's a new layer. And now I've got my two objects. So I'm gonna move this over to the side here. And I'm just gonna go into the eraser set to a soft round brush and make this nice and large and I'm just going to erase some of that section there so let's just move this over it looks like I might need to crop this and then move it over this way a little bit more I'll just make it nice and wide just in case I need to bring any of this back and let's move this one over a bit more and again just erase this middle section all right that looks pretty good like so and then let's go back into that cropping tool and just crop this in a little bit more and you can continue to paint into this uh, you might want to change um, or should I say add some decals so you could add some images on there uh, what have I wrote here I've wrote Falcon uh, so what you can do is you can go into your text here and let's try and make this nice and large. Let's set this to 72. It might still be a little bit too small. So let's set this to... I've got this set to 72. This box is a little bit too small there. There we go. And let's also change this. I've just press Control A just to copy all of that. Let's set this to something like a an off-white. Or you can select the color here and then just slowly increase the light. So something like that. Or you might want it to be a lot darker, like so. And then we can just try and skew this into place. So if I press Control and T, I can right-click on this and press Skew. And then I can skew this like so. You press Control T again and then just make this a bit smaller. And there we go. So that's that skewed in its place. I don't usually use the skew or warp tools on a uh, text. So I usually right click here and then I usually rasterize that layer just so it's just a blank layer uh, and you can do it that way. Um, yeah, that's usually the way I do it. So that's fine. Now that it's a blank layer, um, I could use something like an eraser and maybe let's just add some texture to this eraser, maybe something like this. I'm using Houston Sharp brushes. Um, check it out. I think it's on DeviantArt. I believe I got it from Houston Sharp. Some awesome brushes there. I've been using them for 
an awful long time now. Right, so I can just use this eraser and just scratch up this text just so it's kind of worn. And that paint is slowly coming off. Okay, so now it matches my rustic design. That's looking pretty good. Let's go and create a new layer. And in fact, let's just collapse these ones down. So I'm going to merge this down here. I'm just going to use this magic wand tool just to select everything around this object. So whatever I paint, it's going to be outside of this object. Okay. I'm then going to create a new layer on top. And I'm going to go back to my soft round brush. And I'm just going to paint this a little bit darker on the bottom here. Okay. It's a little bit too dark, so I'm going to go back into opacity and just bring this down a little. That looks pretty good to me. And then I need to add a little bit of a reflection here. Or at least I want this to look like a shiny surface. So I'm going to right click here. Sorry, left click, drag down create a new copy of that layer. I'm going to press Control T to free transform and then right click and flip vertical. Okay, something like that. So I'm going to split these off. So I'm going to just select this one. I don't need the entire object, so I just need that top section. So Control C, Control V. And then I'll go back into that layer and select this one, Control C, Control V. And then this copy that we originally made, I can just go ahead and delete it. So now I've got this one, which is upside down, that I need to skew into place. And I've got this one, which again is upside down, that I need to skew into place. I'm going to use that magic wand tool just to select the outside here and just delete that darker edge, which I don't want. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Like so. And let's just go back into this one and then let's skew this. So control T to free transform. We can go up to edit, sorry, image and um, where are we? Let's click off this Boop. image adjustments and no edit transform free transform. There we go. Control T edit free transform. I get so used to using <laughs> the keyboard shortcuts. I almost forget where they are. Right. Control T right click and let's use the skew and let's just skew this into place. You could also use the warp and then just warp this as well. So it just looks like it's just sitting underneath. And there's a little bit of a gap there. You've got to be careful that you don't end up warping any of these lines, which I definitely don't want. But we're also going to erase some of this, so I think we should get away with it. Okay. So I'm then going to go into opacity and then lower this and I'm also just going to go back into my eraser, just erase that top edge and the bottom edge. So <laughs> it's only made a very small adjustment, but we can see that this is now reflected. I just want to make sure this is straight, uh, that one's straight, like so, you can always just cut through there. There we go. And then just do the same thing for this one. So let's put this here. I'm going to use skew. And if you want to, if you want to be really precise, uh, you might just want to duplicate this again and do two different versions. Um, it's just a little bit more work. You could duplicate this so that this is the one that you then warp because that's the thing that needs to be warped. Around about there. 
that means that you're not going to interfere with any of these lines here which get warped so you're just concentrating on that one little section so it would be round about there but you can then just go into the eraser and erase this section because you've got that already underneath and you would right click and then merge these two together and then drop down the opacity and erase a bit at the top and in this case a bit of the bottom so there we go we have our reflection it would be rude not to add some lens correction some distortion <laughs> um, within the image so let's go to control alt shift and E on the keyboard and I'm gonna go to filter sharpen and I'm gonna just do a slight smart sharpen here just to sharpen those edges a little bit and then I'll go to filter noise and add noise if you've added any kind of paintwork on top you might want to blend some of these uh, elements together again if you've added some images you might want to blend those together and noise is a great way of doing that so I'm gonna set that to one you can kind of just see the noise here and then I'll go into filter and lens correction and I will go into custom and then move this more towards red a little bit more towards magenta and more towards blue and of course you can just experiment with this uh, I find that these kind of settings work quite well click OK and now we have that slight lens correction there or distortion right so that is it that is how we can utilize the constructor tool within 3d code and it's just such an amazing tool especially for hard surface design or like I said if you just you're unsure what you want to model um, or you've got a reference there and you think what's the quickest way of modeling this I know I'll use the constructor tool it's another tool in your kit to utilize and um, yeah just have fun with it so I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next video okay take care for now goodbye